I am Chris Kaler and I'm Amber for some Kujin and today we are for one last time back with you guys with the fall of us of Asha 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 Episode 8 Yeah the Raven So Ooh. it's Roderick and Madeline's time Last episode Frederick met his doom and he's <laughs> probably the, the child that deserved it the most out of all the ushers that died so far with the way that he acted with his wife, hell yeah. Uh, literally, Verna decided to, you know, get involved. She made him uh, put the, the drug he gave his wife into his little pack of, of cocaine. And so when he snorted that in the building that he was supposed to destroy, he got paralyzed. And then she spoke in his voice, started the demolition process, and yep, he got cut in half by a falling uh, sight. Mm. And uh, she was there telling him all about it and really twisting the knife. It could have been easy, painless, a car accident, a, a heart attack with mm. the stuff you were taking. But Meanwhile, no, you had to use the slippers. Mean the slipper, the cutters, the pliers, pliers, same thing. The slipper. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So meanwhile, Madeline has been working to get the big chair and, and you know, push her brother out of the company so she can take charge. Uh, and she even went as far as, you know, convince him to try and kill himself because apparently the deal implies that they, they were born together and they were going to die together. So she thought if he dies first, I'm free from the contract. So that's cool. But Verna is saying, nope, not that easily. She brought him back. And this episode, everything is gonna fall into place. We're gonna figure out what happened the night of, you know, this uh, December 31st, uh, 1979. Uh, we're gonna see how it all ends, what's going on with Madeline downstairs, all of it. Yeah. And I am very excited. Okay. I know that The Raven is a very popular Edgar Allan Poe story. Uh, weirdly enough, I have forgotten what it's about, so I'm not gonna get spoiled. Me neither. But we do have our theories, though. <laughs> <laughs> so let's jump in this episode and see how they end it. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these episodes and check out our Patreon for the full length reactions. And in the meantime, let's go. And listen. There's the opening bell rung today by a representative from Fortune Auto Incorporated. The previous boss? I mean, that, that's what we guessed that it was him. Oh, let's go, man. I want to know <laughs> if we fucked it up or if we were right. Is he gonna see the ghost? Okay, so that was the bell he was hearing then, sort of. He's, he also hallucinated him after the funeral. But why a jester? Annabelle. She had custody. I couldn't stand that. So I waited and I just bonded them with money. Manipulating and they the showed kids. up. I looked at them and I saw myself. But whatever, if their mother had been in there, but it was gone. It was killed by the money. Fucking took the children from her. And Annabelle just couldn't live without them. She killed herself? I saw her today. Annabelle Lee. Mm. How are you here? When people asked how you took them, I'd say he's rich. They only knew appetite, and here you said, gorge yourselves. It's you didn't bullshit. feed them, though, did you? You starved them. Dingle. Less and less. I'm the of damages. Let them hungry. Empty. I thought you were a rich man all this time, but I, I see you now. The poverty of you. Oh, strong words. Maybe this is a kindness in disguise. Maybe they died in their childhoods. <gasps> oh shit. Ah. He truly loved her, but men, you made so many mistakes. There are no more bodies left. Roger. Depends. <laughs> no more skeletons in the closet. Depends. Tell me what happened. Please. It's time. You come to terms right. with what you did. Okay. Oh. Never. That's it. Okay. So like they killed him or something and they put his body in that costume <laughs> forever. That's why he appears like that. Oh man. Well, that's how he died. Man. Two fucking years with that bloodhound on my heels. You played this thing so fucking beautiful. You were my right hand. Yeah, well, not for long. I told, I told the shareholders you were the best thing that has ever happened to this company. But now that they've now, all heard this, if he dies, they're gonna turn to him. He's the right hand. It's a great plan. Fucking evil. You're Sherry Man, aren't you? Holy shit. 
You think they put the drug in it? Probably something. It's a Fortunato. Yes, they're not drinking. They're gonna win, but then they're gonna lose. I'm wondering if they put him behind the wall still alive. Oh, he is still alive. I just feel bad oh. that he's still in this fucking costume. What the fuck is this? It's a hostile takeover. Uh, it sucks. It's gonna suffocate him there. Oh my gosh. If we go to the board and we say that we dodged a bullet, the cancer runs deep. And the man behind it all, he has got to go, doesn't he? Very good to go to me. You want me to what? Resign? No. What do you want me to do? To die here. I'm not okay with them leaving him alive <laughs> behind this. I can get you things. I can give you whatever you want. They don't want you to uh, give them things. They want to take it for themselves. Where it's going to be very disturbing. Like, what have you done? And then you disappeared. You ran off. Can't promote the existing brass. They're all tainted goods. No one wants to put their head through that noose. What if there was a candidate? Oh. Escape the hangman once. I'll give her that she's intelligent. Someone, even Rufus Griswold, admitted was a cut above. The yeah, men of the honor. Yeah, you played in her game. Like you said, you can make all the noise you want, and no one's due back at work for a week, so happy New oh, Year. Oh, shit. This is a fucking horrible death. Oh, my God. The insult. That candle lasts you about an hour or so, then I'm afraid you're in the dark. She's enjoying making him suffer. She likes to see powerful men s suffer under, you know, under knees. And he, f he follows along because that's what he's always done. You are so small. Uh, oh my gosh. The insult that she got. I think it hurt. You sure no one will come down here? And he won't make it past morning, not with the cyanide. Right. At least they put something in his drink, but it's still it. fucking evil. <laughs> we, we guessed it in a way, but to see it happen is fucked up. So what would you do to make your dreams come true? For fucking kids? What would you do right now that you could achieve all the success you ever imagined? A lifetime of luxury, comfort. What would you do? What would you give up? What would you give? Mm. He fucking gave his kids. You're a killer, aren't you? <laughs> yep. I mean, you killed Rufus Griswold tonight. <laughs> what the fuck? What? Uh, she knows You everything. told her. You. What if I said I could guarantee that you'll get away with it? And not just that. All of it. You'll be elected CEO, Roderick. Or Madeline, if you prefer. No legal consequences. Mm. Guaranteed. Hence why they can never pin them Your down. Mm. I just want to see what you do. The fuck are you talking about? We're sitting outside of time and space. This is the moment luck meets opportunity. Mm -hmm. She's just curious to see what they're going to do with that chance. The thing is, they, they could still have made the right decision and they decided to create an empire of death. What if I said you get all that and the price is deferred? To someone else. Let the next generation foot the bill. Oh, Your kids pay. Oh, we fucking knew! So that's it. At the end of it all, just before you would have died, anyway, your bloodline dies with you. And they took it right when he was dying from his sickness. You'd live a long time, but when that curtain falls, everyone takes a bow together. Those kids would have quite the life. You're willing to put your kids' life they in it? They could live decades with every luxury, every opportunity. Yeah, they or had a shitty they could life. could live a little longer, but... Struggle. Mm -mm. They could have been happier. Goes to show that money is not always happiness, hmm? Because they had a shitty life. They struggled in their own way. What do you say? What does that mean for Lenore? I said that she might not be a usher. We said it, yeah. You have a deal. You have a deal. You too, but not on yourself. And the thing is, he knew that, and he still went on and fucked several women to have several kids. House of Usher, whose time has come. Honestly, give him a fucking terrifying ending. They need to die, suffering man. I don't give a shit, like, fuck off. They literally decide to sacrifice. But we'll talk about this. Yeah, so. We'll talk about this because it's the question. They were measuring richness, money, and all of that to suffering, what they went through, and they chose that, thinking it was better. You fucking messed up. Like by the time we got home, it didn't feel real. 
It was a fully a do. And then we never talked about it again. <laughs> he must be thinking, you are crazy, man. What the fuck, man? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. She's so innocent. I don't want anything to happen to her. The terms were clear. Yeah. Oh, fuck. And they're just... Well, they always had a hard time focusing on things outside of their immediate Please concerns, no. didn't they? Her, she wants to take out see. calmly, though. Oh, fucking hell. Can we do something? Can we... Let me tell you a story about your mother. See, she recovers very well. She inherits a sizable fortune when Fortunato collapses. She gives most of it away, but keeps enough to start a non-profit. She calls it the Lenore Foundation. Oh, fucking hell. After her daughter. No. And she saves a lot of lives. And in a decade, it's millions. But your dad's gonna have a you meaning? did that. She's giving her comfort. When you got her out of the house, that choice you made echoes through millions of lives. I thought you should know that. But you're still gonna have to pay for the fucking mistakes. Fucking hell. What are you talking about? Lenore Usher isn't dead. She is. She's been texting you all night. Madeline had this project. It's the AI. Oh my god, it's the AI. Hey, she used Lenore as a beta test. I guess the goddamn thing was activated because it's been texting me. Oh, it's this is stuck her on some nonsense. Never, never more? Never more. It's the word in the raven. Once upon a midnight dreary. Yeah, I do know that. While I pondered. You didn't think of that? Mm -hmm. That one hurts. Yep. You were willing to pay. Fuck, I'm gonna fucking cry, David. Oh man, I'm so fucking sad. Was so it? So fucking mad. Was it worth it? No. Huh? I'm talking to him. Was it worth it? You thought, oh, it's fine. After 50 years, matching one would be adults, gonna be fine. Yeah, no, you didn't think about potential grandchildren. Yeah. People who didn't deserve this. Even the children didn't None deserve of this. None of them. Show down. Oh, fuck. Oh, uh, yep. Because of you. Without pain. Which you didn't do. Nobody can stomach a little discomfort. I wave my wand. Wasn't enough. They just kept wanting more. Don't kid a kidder. <laughs> when it comes to sheer body count, you're in my top five. Just the other four. Take a look. Oh god, they're falling. Those are your bodies. Oh fuck. Oh my god, every raindrop day one. Oh my god, it's crazy imagery. My god. That's your true monument, Roderick. Get rid of bodies. It's a wonder of the world. It's eternal. That's your legacy. When you see the extent of what you've done through decades in your life. Tonight. Nothing more we can do. <coughs> There's nothing. We always said it was you and me. We said we'd change the world. We did, didn't we? We did. For the worst. Yeah. Yeah, there's something in the drink. <sighs> Coming full circle. We built a life out of nothing but <coughs> dirt and trauma, empty pockets and broken hearts. We did that. And say what you will, it was fucking substantial. You don't want to get it on, don't buy it. You don't want to get addicted, don't abuse it. They're mad because we made it available and deserved. They want an entire meal for five dollars in five minutes, and then they complain it's made of shit and plastic. <laughs> we will get around to funding AIDS research and diabetes and heart disease just as soon as we figure out how to keep our geriatric dicks harder for a few more minutes. We turn men into cum fountains and women into factories, cranking out what? an impoverished workforce there for the labor and to spend what little they make consuming. And what do we teach them to want? Houses they can't afford. She's and not wrong and the fact so that it's coming from her is kind of... They're screaming for it, they're insisting upon it. And we're the problem. You're proud of part of it. A huge part of it too. They fucking invented us. They beg for us, they're begging for us too. So I say, we stand tall and proud, brother. Bills come due. Don't care if it's death herself. She wants Madeline to fucking usher. She's gonna have to look me straight in the eyes. Pretty sure she is, girl. <laughs> yep. Motherfuck. Oh, You're right. You are Madeline fucking usher. Ah, oh, 
gotta make it, you know, worthy of a fucking goddess, right? Oh, I was gonna take out our eyes. Oh, fuck! Oh! No, 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 no! <laughs> oh, you get a queen's death. And you're gonna live forever. Ah, shit! And just like the story, she's coming out to get you and take you with her. Are you sure she was dead? Mm -hmm. I that's, did not, that's I Usher. did not check that. That's you know, the fall of House of Usher. <laughs> Our mother was the same way. Came back from the dead. Thank you. It may not have been perfect, but you can't say we didn't change the world. Yeah, uh -huh. before the no, worst. Like I said, I've been looking in this fucking doorway the whole time. I knew. Deep down, I knew I would climb to the top of the tower on a pile of corpses. Oh, <laughs> shit. When we told them it was about soothing the world's pain. What if you're dead, but don't it suffer anymore? You can't eliminate pain. There's no such thing as a pain. It's so dramatic, man. <laughs> And imagine if we put that on the bottle. I bet I still could have sold it. Fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, man. We're gonna die together. Nevermore. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> get out, baby. Get out. And the hearth is gonna swallow the house. Oh, shit. Edgar Allan Poe was a genius <laughs> with issues, man. <laughs> uh, crazy eyes. Juno inherited everything. Good. And she completely dissolved hey. it. Every dollar went for rehabilitation programs, addiction and recovery research. She weaned herself oh, yes. off Thank Megadon you. Yes. completely. Yeah, Good she's job, fucking girl. queen! And she, yeah, they're gonna spend years with their money taking care of the issues they made. He took a chance, he still got what he deserved, and it's fine. He surrounded himself at the courtroom, and he will die in prison. But I think he made his choice, so he's fine with it. Didn't, uh, know what to do with this. It don't matter in the end why he did any of it. We don't want your confession, so... Take all that with you, why don't you? I'm going home to my husband, my kids. What he has? Their kids. He's rich. I'm the richest man in the world. <laughs> you know that? Ah, oh, shit. The night, though clear, shall this is frown. Your this is who you and the stars shall look not down. With light like hope to mortals given. To thy weariness shall seem as a burning. And a fever which would cling to thee forever. Tell now me, our thoughts thou shalt not one. banish. Now our visions ne'er to vanish. What day came down to? From thy spirit shall they pass, like dewdrop from the grass. How it hangs upon the trees, a mystery of mysteries. <laughs> oh, god damn. Oh, I've been saying that a lot, I think, during this react. <sighs> oh, I would have preferred Felinar to not be a usher. Oh, sure. Right. Okay. It is true, we did not take account that Madeline was creating an AI to live beyond that, and she took Leonard as a co I forgot role. about that. that so we assumed that she was still alive at the end of it, but she was not. She wasn't. She was still the last one to go when it comes to the, the kids. You know what? I think that maybe you said that they went from the youngest to the oldest. I don't think so. I think that well, they did go from <coughs> youngest to the oldest. Later went at the end. She's the, She's the only one. one that didn't fit the bills. I think that maybe they went... <coughs> Sorry. They left, but which one would maybe hurt Roderick more? He wasn't... Oh, yeah. He wasn't close to Prospero. No, yeah, it's true. Okay. Yeah, and like the that. more he went, like, he wasn't... More or less close with Camille, more or less close with Napoleon. And Lenore but was the he, one that hurt. He the was most. close with, with Victorine, with what she was doing. And then you got Tom Lane, his first, his girl, first kids, yeah. his first bond, and the one that resembled the most if pre is a yeah, yeah. late wife. I like that. It makes sense because the point would be to pay. Uh, yeah, I like that. Lenore was definitely the one that hurt the most. I all of us. I was dairy died, damn it. 
and like we f we saw you know we saw how how it could have been with all of the others if they had been worthy, if they had been good people. Uh, it, it comes down to choice for Lenore. She did everything right, and her choices led to millions of people being fine, being helped, and just getting a happy life and stuff. So she made she did so much without actually doing anything. Like it it came from a small choice that would make sense to a lot of people. You help your mom, you know, you, you, you do the right thing. You stood out to your father and you help her, your mom, yeah. And like all of these kids had the chance to change the world, do something great. They were given everything, every chance, but they they truly had nothing. This This episode really comes down to that, the balance between what makes you rich, what makes you poor. A lot of people would assume that money, riches, that's what gives you uh, a meaning. That's what gives you worth. When in fact, you know, the poorest men of all, like they did, they literally, <coughs> she literally said that like that, like what's best, uh, you know, a few years, but with the best life possible, with as much more money than they can spend, all of that, or 50, 70, 80 years of worry and stuff. That's, I wanted to say in the episode, that is life. It comes with, yes, pain, Mm. And he said it himself, you can't get rid of pain. Pain exists. Pain is there. You can't just pretend it's not there. But you need pain to feel all the good stuff too, though. Yeah. You might suffer. You might go through shit. It might be hard. But you get to have your family. Your legacy is different. He got everything else. He sacrificed his legacy because he thought... And I will say, I was shitting on them. Like, I was like, ah, blah, 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 putting them down. Which I, I still am. But... There is a part of me that also understands why they chose this because coming from where they came from, the life that they had, they expect they they could not see it any different. Riches meant a good life with no struggle, no poverty, no, you know, wondering if you were going to die, no illness, <coughs> no nothing. And for them, the the best the best life possible would be something where there's no suffering, no worrying. And as fucked up as it is, I feel like back then, Roderick chose it not only for himself, but he chose it for his kids too. He would rather give them a life with all the, the money in the world, where they don't have to worry like he did when he was a kid, with their mom. Knowing though that they were probably going to die when he dies, but for that, for him, that was years away. So in his mind, they were still going to have the greatest life possible. But then he did give them that life and it led to nothing. Money doesn't equal happiness. Yep, exactly. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that you cannot be happy if you have money, though. It's all depend what you do with it. But with Roderick, it's because he was so obsessed with the gains, getting stronger, getting richer, getting bigger, that he, achieving his goal, that he starved them, kind of like the the ghost of Annabelle Lee said. He starved them of everything else. Yeah. He only gave them money. And the, the the thought that they needed to do better, needed to do as great as he was, because that was the whole fucking point of the family. Like, we sacrificed, like, right, I know he forgot about it, but still, they sacrificed so much to get this. Now that they have this, they need to keep this. Whatever the cost. They messed up the whole fucking way. He made it hell for his kids because of his obsession all birth like both he and Madeline, all of that came from their trauma as kids. All of that came from the fact that they had nothing. They struggled. They saw their mom struggle and they did not want that for themselves. Kind of like he, he, he truly, like he said that deep down he knew he was going to build an empire on corpses. But I think, you know, his goal was still achieved in a certain way. He made himself safe in a way he wasn't when he was a kid. Whereas for Madeline, her obsession of living forever, surpassing men, becoming powerful, becoming a goddess, a queen, like that came from her need for safety as well. Her need to not be put down by powerful men like when she was a kid and when their biological dad did that shit. She saw herself in her mother, sort of, sort of like she wanted to be yeah. strong. So the both of them achieved that at a cost that they were not willing to pay in the end. So you won't get to live forever. You won't get to have your family and stuff. Like you, they, they, they lived a, an empty life and died a terrifying death. And that, that, the worst is that he never took into consideration. Like I, I can respect Madeline for getting the uh, IUD. IUD because I'm like, dude, at least she 
considered the idea that this could have been real and she made sure not to have kids knowing what would happen. He, he slept around. He got kids more and more. He forgot. Like, it's like it didn't matter. And then in the end, yeah, you're paying the price because you didn't, when you took the deal, he was the first one to say yes. He never thought that, yeah, in the future, there's a chance I, I'm going to have more kids. And it would have been less intense if he had no kids when he took the deal, but he already had two and he was still willing to take the deal. He, he didn't think th things through. He didn't think about the future, about like, he, she said a long time in the future, but that doesn't mean that they're going to be old and gray. It could have been tomorrow even. Well, she said a long but, time in the future. A long time in the future, but still, yeah. He, he didn't take into account, like, I know he thought he was giving them this great life, but he didn't take into account the sacrifices, the number of kids, and the fact that right now, like, these kids will get to grow and they'll die older for sure. But who's to say that they won't have kids like Lenore, who died a way, way younger, than, a lot younger than all the others, and did not deserve this. None of them did, truly. No, but I won't say that they were uplifting or upstanding people. No, but, but at first when he made the deal, they didn't deserve first, this. No, they didn't deserve it. He, even if they lived decades, like 40 or 50 years, he still ripped, uh, ripped, ripped them. Stole. Ripped, uh, but what's the, ripped, what's the sentence? Ripped them. <laughs> robbed them? Robbed them, thank you. <coughs> he still robbed them of their lives. Yep. He made that choice for them. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking sad, but it's really, really well done. I love how it all came together. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe, like I said, was a very, very... Tormented man. Yeah, he had a, <laughs> he had a great imagination. Like, his, his work is phenomenal. Yeah. He had also his issues, uh, definitely. But still, to see his work come to life like that in a way that's interconnected everything is together like it's just fucking great uh and bringing in all the the poetry from his writing and stuff like that made it so much more impactful and everything they said like that's more modern is so fucking true like about the speech that madeline gave in the end like it, it that's another thing completely like if you take if you talk, if we talk about the harsher problems and what they did for themselves, that's one thing. But then everything else that's linked to the company they built and her trying to put the blame on the consumers, saying that they're the ones asking for them to do this. I'm like, the thing with a drug is that when you give it to someone who's in pain, who's looking for a way out, they're going to want to have it more. Kind of like they did. You were offered a deal, and instead of struggling and working hard and just trying to, f to do life, you took the easy way out. Yeah. So you're not any better than those cons consumers. Like you're, you took the easy way out, and then you offered an easy way out to others, knowing what it was going to do. Kind of like Verna, she definitely knew. You definitely knew when you took the deal what it was going to do in the future. You didn't give a shit. You still took the drug, and then you suffered the consequences. And unfortunately, yeah, we're, you could blame like you could blame whoever, but once they're addicted, you can't get off. Like addiction works like that. That's the thing. Like once you're addicted, you're gonna want more, and you're gonna want more and more and more. They took the deal, and then they got addicted to that safety, that money, that company, and they could never get out. So they're not better than those they, they she insulted in the end. Well, she does have a point though with a monologue that if it went for the demand they wouldn't have a product, you know? True, but like Compa I said... Companies will still uh, create and sell product, good and bad ones, as still there is a demand for it. True, but humanity would rather have something easily, fast, than struggle to get it. True. It's a lot, it, take, it costs a lot more, for example, like let's talk food. As a consumer, it costs a lot less and it's a lot easier, faster to get fast food, fast food, than it is to get something healthy. It costs more. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, the struggle, it, it, it sucks. It's harder to be healthy than to go the easy way and get fast food. So, of course, the population is going to go for the fast food often and then they'll produce more and more. They'll make it easy access because it doesn't cost as much also to produce than everything else. Easy, the, the easy way out applies to everyone, consumers and producers. 
if they create this, why, it's because it costs a lot less. Why do you think that us as a society, or just us as human in general, we're still leaning toward the easy way? Because we don't like to struggle. Who likes to struggle? Yeah. No one likes to work hard for something, like, especially in life, like, we love the idea that, you know, we're born here, we shouldn't have to struggle to survive, you know, but we, we created this society based on merit, based on, on money, based on all of that. Like, we, we have to pay for clean water, clean, you know, fucking air, clean everything. Like, we gotta pay to live. We gotta pay to have a roof over our head. We gotta pay to eat. This everything costs something. Everything is a struggle. So if we're already struggling to survive, and we, we are given the choice to make it easier or harder, we're gonna take the easy way out. Mm. It's already because we suffered because we made it that way. You know, it's it's a it comes from a long, long, long history of people <laughs> making money off people's backs. Like it's, no, but still the way the way that we. It's like we say often that we uh, sometimes people are gonna create their own enemy, like their own uh, problem, like their own nemesis. It's the same thing. Like we, maybe not us, our ancestors, or just our the old society back then. But we created our current problems, and we we need to pay the price right now. And the thing is, I'm I'm gonna link it to Roderick and his empire of corpses. The thing is, the people who make it, the people who manage to get on top, I feel like the joy, since everyone is struggling at, at, to a certain point, you know, when you make it, when you're on top of the pyramid, you enjoy it so much, you don't want it to change. You don't want to lose your spot on the top. So you'd rather have people struggle to confirm that you are better. You're better off. You can't be better off if everyone if everyone is on the same you know uh, level as you. So I think that's why you know Roderick said he needed to take pain away. So he gave easy he gave the easy way out to people, but you cannot give them pain free everything. You cannot give them a solution because it, it's impossible. And since he, he needed to feel safe on his little throne make himself feel powerful and stuff, he also contributed to that machine where you're still the producer and they're still the consumers and they are addicted to you because if they're not addicted to you, you lose your position. It's fucked up, but that's how it works. Yeah. Oh God. And Madeline is no better. She wanted to be <laughs> on top and she got, I mean, she got the ending she deserved. Who do you think was worse between Madeline and Roderick? Madeline, because I feel like everything sort of came from her. Roderick also contributed and he understood what he was doing, but I feel that at... After everything we've seen, I'm still willing to say that deep down, she was the one that pushed him to do more. She know? came up with the plans. She, everything was her idea, and I feel like he followed. And he agreed to a certain extent, but that, that came from trauma. So out of the two of them, I feel like Madeline. Uh, she came up with the plan for Gris, but he was the one to accept the deal first. Because she wasn't willing to put her life on the line. Sort of how what if you think about it madeline was the one who came up with the plan to get rid of the boss yeah but when was the time to make the deal with verna roger was the one to take it first because he had the, more to gain from it and, and madeline wasn't willing to put her line her life on the line she even asked uh, when you say that it's gonna end when he died, you mean just him, right? No, no, you come, you come with each other. Well, of course, but that's she was. She's always been the brain. He's been. He was the heart. I feel mm -hmm. like that's why I came back a little bit on my thoughts here and talked about how maybe he did it also for his kids, thinking he was giving them the greatest gift when in fact he was giving them the greatest curse. Yeah, because it's based on facility. He thought it was the best thing ever, but that's the thing. Like, yes. Facility is one thing and, and you think you have it all and you think you're rich, but the struggle can still be worth it because once you get your reward at the end, you get to enjoy it. Life is a, a culmination of good and bad moments and what makes the good moments feel good is when you have those little bad moments to remind you that those moments are good. But once again, the fact that he made that deal doesn't mean that he could still have lived a good life with his kid and give them a good life, but he wasted. He would have struggled, but he, he could have been happier. Who's to say? I mean, both options, 
he could have lived a good life. He's, but she said he was going to be a, a poet, a struggling, broke poet, mm. but he would have done something that made him happy. Who knows? Maybe mm. maybe would have it would have been bad too, but that's the point. He mm. had a choice and he picked that and that's mm. how it ended. And the thing is, after everything... No, sorry, I'm losing my, my train of thought here. Sorry, I knew what I wanted to say and I forgot. What I wanted to say is that both paths, like the one with he needs to struggle in life and the one with everything is easy with money, both paths, he could have lived a good life with his children. No, okay, okay. But I remember what was No, 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 let me say it because wasted. I forget. Okay, go, go ahead. The thing with what the path he chose is that still, despite what they said about us being addicts and we're the ones that created them and we're still asking for more, is that they're the same. They're addicted so with the path of money, they were still going to be addicted. They're still humans. So they got what they thought they wanted, but the, the curse is that they want more after that. It, mm. They thought they would. It, the thing is, when you want money, and I've heard that from people who make a lot of money, you think you there's going to be a point where you'll have enough. But the more money you have, the more you feel like you need to have more. There's never an end to this. Uh, at least, I mean, I'm saying that from from the point of view of someone who does have money, someone who did say that. So because just because it's gonna lose it or something, or? It, it's like an addiction. Like I remember, okay, personal thing going on here. Last year when I went to the hospital, uh, I got uh, insurance money because I was gravely ill. So that was the most money I ever got in my bank account. In one shot. In one shot. So f I knew that for the following year, while I was ill, I was not going to struggle. I was going to be able to pay my, my bills. I was not going to stress or anything. Yet, first month after getting the money, I already started panicking over the idea of losing it. I was still freaking out over the idea that it was going down when I was paying bills. And I was like, shit, like, I need to make more. I need to make more. I need to make sure that it's still going to stay. So I got my safety net, but still... I was freaking out over the idea of losing the safety net. So once you get your safety net, once you get what you believe is the goal, then you need to keep it. And that's when you start worrying again. You can never win. And since he started worrying and he, he, he focused all his attention on keeping his safety net, keeping his position, everything else became hell. He had no time for anything else. So there you go. He fucked up real good. And they all <laughs> suffered for it. Oh, man. It's a beautifully crafted show, by the way. Really, True. really well done. Uh, not as emotional as the others, what we're used to, obviously. It's not the point. But uh, it's a great take on humanity. And I think it's a great discussion. A great discussion come it, out. It comes is a out great take about greed. Uh, about human with our greed, you know. Mm -hmm. What we're willing to do to achieve our goals and stuff. What we're willing to sacrifice made with ourselves or what with um, people that are related to us, you know? And not just that, like it's just making us look at what society is like and how we could change things, but we don't want to change things it because... It's not a good portrait, by the way. <laughs> well, no, because like it sucks and it creates problems, but since the rich like to stay rich and the poor can't change things, the, the wheel is never going to change. And like there is a there is such a thing as you know when you have struggled your whole life and you get to the top and you manage to be happy sort of, you won't want to lose that. Like who who wants? Not everyone wants to make a lot of money coming from you know a, a place where they have nothing. Not everyone is willing to get everything and then give it all, make make people's lives less hard because. As humans, we're selfish, and a lot of us would rather see others struggle as much. I, I've heard a lot of people be like, especially the older generation these days, they say like, oh, I've had it hard. You should have it hard too. Why do, why do you get to, you know, a, a, why would you get an easy life if I had to struggle? I hear that a lot, and it's fucking selfish, because usually you should work hard, to make the next generation's life easier and they should do the same. Work as much as possible to make the next generation's life easier. But in our little world, we feel that if we struggle, others have to struggle too. Because it's unfair if we're the only ones who struggle. Yeah. So those who manage to get a lot of money, not everyone, a lot of, some of people, we saw it in the show even, like Lenore was fucking great, her mom did great too. 
Some people are good, are, are good, but most people, they get to a point where they have a lot and they don't want to lose all of that. They don't want to give it, make it easy for others. They'd rather the, the wheel keeps turning so they stay on their throne, but it doesn't necessarily mean it, you know, it gives them happiness or anything. Especially if you, you know, put to the side everything else and you focus only on, on your money and your empire. Ah, still a great <laughs> show. Love it. Yeah. I think, what was the death that made you most react? Not the, the saddest one, but what was, oh my god, this one was really epic. Well, the saddest one is definitely the norm. Oh, of course it is. Even though, like, you um, you said you almost cried. I was in tears. I, I was just fucking in awe. I, like, I really almost cried, seriously, because that was just so freaking sad. I don't know. I didn't get close to Lenore, so I I didn't feel it. But I was in awe with everything they did and how they, they brought it all together. That was just cool. The one that gave me the most... The best... The, the most intense reaction, maybe Frederick made me more happy. Because it was fucking cool. It was intense as fuck. And he it was deserved. Yeah. But the most brutal one, the one that shocked me the most was probably Victorine. Oh, yeah. That one really hurt close yeah. to the heart. <laughs> and Prospero's death also has a, a an important place in the, the top three, maybe, because that was the first mm -hmm. and also very painful and brutal way to die. Really graphic, too. Yeah. Yep. I'm really glad this show was made. I think it was pretty cool. It's a good way to put some shine some light on Edgar Allan Poe's work. And uh, it's always fun to see these guys come back and do shit together. I'm excited for the next show they're going to do. All right. So that's pretty much it. Can't wait to see it. So thank you guys so much for watching House of Usher. The fall of the House of Usher. It did Usher, fall. Usher, Usher. With us. Uh, you finally got your story at the end. My story? Well, she came back from the dead and she struggled. Uh... Yeah, well, that's what, that was always going to be the, <laughs> the story of the fall of the House of Usher. Uh, they kept it close to the actual thing, so... Um, maybe the boss death was something like that was... Um... Well, they gave him cyanide, so he, he died before he could like de be dehydrated or anything. It's still fucking crazy because they put him in there and made him believe he was just going to stay there alone for for three days, four days, maybe until he fucking died slowly. Mm. It, he still died in there slowly, alone in the dark. Like, that's so fucked up. But again, that's Madeline trying to, you know, stick it up to the big man who she thought had stolen what they deserved, which in a way they kind of, I mean, he did kind of take it, but it's not because your dad was this man that his empire went to you, goes to you, you know? You don't deserve anything coming in. True. But... They were wronged as kids, and that created a whole bunch of trauma, and yeah. All right. Still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching this show with us. Uh, if you want to see the full-length reactions to these episodes, they are on Patreon. The link is in the description below. But after that, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I guess we'll see you with another gonna, show. Gonna see you with the next one, guys. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.